have the app on your phone, you can go to the bulletin and see the text that we're going to read. If you brought a bulletin, you can read along as well. It's a text from Exodus chapter 17. Before I read the text, I want to ask you a question to be thinking about as you hear God's Word read. What battle are you facing tonight? What insurmountable challenge do you feel like you or a loved one is up against? There's such a calming spirit when we're here together as a family, when we see the bigness of God's creation and the beauty of God's creation, and yet we know inside all of us there's a churning storm that's brewing some kind of fear that we all maybe are even afraid to verbalize. Maybe it's a battle that someone you love deeply is facing and you feel helpless. And you feel that you wish you could rescue them and you have no power or no ability to get there. Maybe it's something in you. It could even be an inner doubt this evening. I believe God's Word and this particular situation speaks to us even in the midst of the beauty, even in the midst of the bigness of God's power. Do you wonder at times if your situation is known by God? Do you wonder if if you're out of reach? You know God cares for you and you know that God is involved, but you feel like this one is on your shoulders and you feel a burden. Well, think about that battle 
as I read to you from Exodus chapter 17. The context here is that the children of Israel have been led out of bondage with the clothes on their back and the spoils of the Egyptians, but they're on their way to the promised land. But they're nomads who now must become an army because the Amalekites are moving against them. And they're going to possess a promise that's been given to them. Isn't that a beautiful thought about the Christian life? We're on our way to possess a promise. You know, that's what faith is, the definition of faith. Faith is living in a future reality that God has promised as if it was already true. Living that reality as, as if that promise is reality. That's what God tells us in covenant. He says, I will bless you. I will be your God. I will give you a home and a place. And I will bless all the people of the earth through you. That's the backdrop here. But now they must go into the land and possess what has been promised. Listen to Exodus 17. And the Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. When Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him and sat him on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write on a scroll as something to be remembered and make sure that Joshua hears it because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. When you face your battle, when you find yourself in an insurmountable situation, this text gives us gospel hope. We can possess what has been promised to us. And I want you to see three things here. First, Moses held his hands up. Moses held his hands up, and as he held his hands up, the people of God were victorious. That picture of Moses holding up the staff of God was the picture of God's promise of salvation. Now we know this picture was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 1 says. God, having long ago spoke to the prophets in many portions and in many ways, has now spoken to us in His Son, through whom He, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also He made the world. And He, His Son, that greater Moses, is the radiance of God's glory. He is the exact representation of God's nature. He upholds all things by the word of His power. When He made purification for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. I want you to know, the greater Moses 
holds up his hands for you tonight. But he holds up his hands as one who opened those hands on the cross and accomplished what Moses could never accomplish. He's seated at God's right hand. And you know what the Bible tells us that Jesus is doing at God's right hand? He's holding up his hands for you, brother and sister in Christ. The staff of God. He is the intercessor. He is our intercessor. So first and foremost, I want you to be confident you can possess God's promise because Jesus is at God's right hand. Secondly, not only did Moses hold up his hands, but Aaron and her held up Moses' hands. We're told that Moses' hands grew weary. What a great description of service in the work of God. We will come to the end of ourselves early or late, but we will recognize we're no match for the battles that we face. We have an enemy that's way more powerful than we could ever dream or hope for. But we have one who has been victorious. And it says that when he ascended, when the Son of Man ascended, he descended and gave gifts to men. Not only can you be encouraged this evening because Jesus is praying for you, but Jesus has given you a community to hold up your hands. This is a beautiful picture. We know if Moses became tired or weary, we can't make it through this world on our own. We need an Aaron nearby. We need a her. Life partners in the journey. That's what God has given us here at First Presbyterian Church. If you're a visitor, if you're new, I want you to know this is a place where people readily admit our hands get tired. We grow weary and we need help. And we're not afraid to ask for help. If you'll come join us, you can help us as well. And hopefully we'll help you. We'll cry with you. We'll mourn with you. We'll dream with you. We'll fight with you. God will give you a community when you feel like the battle is more than you can handle. Last thing. Moses held up his hands. Aaron and Hur held up Moses' hands. Moses built an altar. You notice in verse 15, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, God lifted up His hand on behalf of His people. I want you to know this. When you worship God, you declare to all of His enemies that He will have the last word. You declare to your soul, God will have the last word. I want you to know, over the past several years, I have had the privilege and our pastors have had the privilege to walk with you through some very difficult times. Times when you wondered if you'd ever find hope again or you wondered was there anything positive that was going to come out of the wounds and the difficulties. And I've watched you worship God week after week. Together we've raised a banner to our King who will have victory over His enemies. And I've seen you heal. And I've seen your smiles return. And I've seen your hope began, began to be real to you again. You are beginning to possess what has been promised to you. Well, tonight as we continue a ministry year with an emphasis on prayer, I ask you to make prayer a priority. I love what Ravi Zacharias says. He says that if you're not a praying Christian, you will become exhausted trying to bear the infinite and the eternal with the natural. But if you're a praying Christian, 
God's Spirit will carry you on the wind. He will give you strength that cannot be explained, humanly speaking. That's our call, to raise a banner together. Because Jesus is praying for us. He's given us brothers and sisters to hold us up, even when we feel like we have no strength. And He's given us worship to reshape our souls. Such a privilege to be out here together in God's creation, being reminded in His bigness and in His beauty, we belong to Him, dear First Presbyterian Church. Let's pray and thank Him now. We belong to You, Jesus Christ. In all our weakness and our fears and all of our failures, we're Your family. We have no hope but You. We have no home but the home that You've built for us. When we're too weak to even hope, thank You, dear Jesus, for hoping for us. When we lack the faith to even pray, thank You, Jesus, for praying for us. When our hearts and our arms are so heavy we can't hold them up, Thank you, dear Jesus, for sending brothers and sisters to join us. We raise a banner to you this night to declare, at this moment, we belong to you. We're your family. Continue to shape our souls with the hope that you've promised, that we would be people of your promise. And when we fail... And when we turn back, strengthen us. Send your Spirit. Don't let us ever, ever turn away. Thank you for your gift. The gift of your Son. The promise of your Word. The love of your family. The beauty of your mission. Strengthen us to that end, we pray. For Christ's greater glory for the good and strength of your people, and for the advance of your work in the world. We pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen.